see that last bit. <laughs> Spin the air everywhere. Oh, man. It's got my everything. Gun. My everything. Like my, my little fingers. It so looks... Is it swelling? Yeah, it looks kind of swelling. It's just my knees. Like, I think we swollen on the sides. <laughs> Uh, but we did it. So congratulations to us. To Here's the Omine. Omine. Omoku Kakemichi. Cheers. That's kind of it. Ah, that feels good. So I'm more clean and refreshed. I'm tired. <laughs> Sleepy. <laughs> You know who's a bit tired still? Who's a bit tired? Do you want to see this? I thought you might laugh when you saw the map. Wow, that looks even more beaten up than you are. <laughs> That's our uh, river, do you remember that? I don't want to look at that anymore. We've done it. God, it's tatty. It's absolutely battered. It's a long Isn't way. It's the right way around. Is it, I guess, the way around? It's a matter of that yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for bed. Uh, this, and then game over. Mm. <sighs> okay guys, good evening. I've managed to find a quiet space in my own room where I can talk to you for a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm really tired. That was a that was a hard five days, and uh, I've got a few questions from my team that I'd like to answer. The first thing most people wanted to know was like how me and Duncan got on, and if there were any arguments and things like that. And it's so boring to say the truth. It was it was fine, and we got on so well. Um, it was quite interesting because he's obviously another British guy and I haven't spent that much time with somebody from England for a long, long time. And uh, I could see uh, my British side coming out more and more, but as for falling out or anything like that, there's nothing. There wasn't, there wasn't even a single argument, which is super rare under like the conditions of spending every single waking hour together for, for five days consecutively and in really difficult conditions. I felt like he had my back. I hope I had his back. Yeah, can't can't say enough good words for Duncan. The love story continues. Then the uh, next question was, what's the hardest part? So, um, uh, what was the hardest part? There's a few hard parts. It's hard to pick one. Um, the obvious one is that the five day trail has so many ascents and sometimes it's you going up for so long your legs are kind of burning uh, physically it's pretty tough um, maybe another hard part is the fact that it's five days long and I only had four days worth of clothing you know I have to obviously have my super fashionable get up so yeah by the last day I was thinking so putting on sweaty wet clothes that's pretty hard that was a hard part um, wearing shoes that are like half a size too small for me. My boots are a bit small and that's completely wrecked my feet. That hurt a lot. So maybe maybe that's the hardest part. The hardest part is on your feet. Your feet get trashed. Doing, your feet get trashed anyway doing something like this. It's hard to keep them in good condition. But my feet seriously suffered. What was the most amazing special part? Okay, so for me, like climbing the... The, the kind of solid rock faces on a chain or making a fire and there's so many amazing things that happen but one thing stands out for me like blew me away from, from and it was it happened on the second day and we met a guy called Yoshio and he was a 74 year old man I mean the story is finished he was a 74 year old man walking the trail the trail is a seven to eight day recommended trail for only experienced mountaineers or climbers or the monks themselves use it as a training route. We were walking it in five, that was our challenge. 
Um, people have done it in less, uh, trail runners and things like that. People generally take more. I did not expect to meet somebody else doing it in a five day. And I did not expect that they would be 74. Every moment after that, every chain I climbed up, every every hard uphill or every like dangerous downhill, I just kept thinking that a 74 year old man made this route possible. And I'll share a little bit more. I remember saying to him, in my country, it's amazing what you're doing because in my country, from the age of 60, people say, I'm old now, I can't do it. And he said, oh no, it's the opposites. It's, it's the other way around. I am 60, therefore I do it. In fact, I'm 74, therefore I do it. His idea was that he, d he didn't really need to explain it in great detail. The fact that you have become 60 does not stop you from doing anything. In fact, now is, now is his chance. He said he had more free time now than he ever has. He's obviously retired, but more than that, I can feel that he knows his body still has Genki, it's still fit, it's still healthy, so he has to use it. It would be, it would be a waste not to. And that was just so inspiring. And I felt like in that moment, I found this like little piece of we're looking for the soul of Japan. While well, I'm starting to think that the soul of Japan doesn't exist, and that there is no one soul of Japan. There's so many things, there's so many components. But that attitude of the the kind of elderly generation to just never give up. It's like almost makes me cry to think about it I swear to God it's like it's so beautiful and it's so inspiring and I can never tell you how hard it was for somebody like me who's meant to be you know fairly accomplished at these kind of challenges and fit and a 74 year old man was doing the same thing and probably without without whinging about his feet so much you know and I pray that I can still not only physically do what he can do when I'm 74, but mentally be ready to do what he can do and greet us with the same kind smile that he greeted me with. Never forget that moment, never. Okay, did you ever think you can't complete the journey? Uh, and did I feel that Duncan didn't, wouldn't ever complete the journey? So first part of the question is, did I, did I think um, we would ever not make it and yes there was a point um, the first two days we had arranged to meet the team uh, on checkpoints especially because we started out with four people so we only took 24 hours worth of food we weren't prepared to go and do the full five days because we knew at certain points the trail intercepted roads especially early on in the journey so we thought at first we'll, we'll meet at those checkpoints uh, for safety reasons and on the second day meeting the first day the meeting the team was tough but on the second day we had a really really big problem meeting the team uh, we got lost trying to find a way down to the road and we lost a few hours um, we ended up in a really really dangerous situation where we came to the edge of a cliff we could see the road below and we were desperately trying to get down to that road so we could meet the team but by doing so um, was super super dangerous and uh, we ended up having to turn back we got lost again and it was a really really tough night eventually we did find the, f the team and obviously we did find the food and and that was the last time we met the team we took enough food for the rest of the days we knew it was all on us then and it was okay from that point on I didn't doubt that we'd make it but before that I felt for a moment we wouldn't find the team and we would have to give it up. We would have to find a way down in the morning because we didn't have the food and the resources to finish the trip. Um, did I think that Duncan would ever not finish the journey? No. No, not for a second. Um, the first day I could see that the first... Um, Natalie and Tim did a great job. They got the first day done, but I knew then straight away that they wouldn't make it the five days. Not, not at such a pace anyway. Not not a, a seven day trail in five days, especially this trail. And then as I walked with Duncan on the first day, I kind of knew that he already had it in him. Maybe I knew he had it in him before we even got on the trail uh, on the 
on the second day, the third day, the fourth day, it was, it was obvious that he was strong enough. Whether I led the way and he stuck right up against my back, he never dropped any space behind me, never looked like he was struggling. When he was in front of me, he set an amazing pace and I had to like, you know, kind of watch myself that I was keeping up with him. So yeah, never doubted the man. He's, he's solid as a rock, strong as an ox, man, that guy. How was the food for the trip? How about the water? Um, food was okay. Uh, first few days, especially, you know, the team would drop stuff off. We'd eat on a giddy rice, rice with different things. Um, uh, sometimes dried potato, it's kind of common in Japan. Um, as it went on, by day, by the time we got to day four, especially, there was no niceties left. It was down to nuts, raisins, and, and bars. That was all we had. Day four and day five were the same. So three meals. In fact, we didn't really do meals, right? We just, we just walked and ate as we walked. But basically, all we were doing is either shoveling nuts down our throat, or eating bars. Um, I quite like the bars, I, quite, I love nuts, but yeah, two days solid. We, we were ready for like, you just wanna eat something solid and you, you wanna eat something that's not sweet. You want to eat, you know, like a, a dish rice with vegetables and meat on it or something like this, you know. So, but it's, it's not so bad, the food was difficult. Water was interesting. Water we started off with, um, I started off with four liters, a little bit more. Uh, I was quite concerned about the water, especially the rest of the team, you know, Natalie only took half a liter, which obviously isn't enough that I was counting on drinking my water. Duncan took about two. So I tried to overcompensate that by taking four, of course, every liter of water is a kilogram in your bag, it's very, very heavy. Um, I was willing to take that risk and take more. And Thank God I did because we drank every last drop of that water on that first day. So then I, I really thought, okay, I should always have four liters with me. But as I learned throughout the journey, four liters was actually more than enough if you can guarantee to hit checkpoints and if you're smart to know where the water points are. After meeting a few people along the route, I just slowly dropped down. Um, we went down to about two and a half liters. And on one night we got complacent because we were told that it was safe to walk with two liters. I still had two and a half. I drank my two, I drink a lot. So I drank my whole two and a half. I arrived at one of the, the huts, super, super basic hut. It was a shed. We arrived in the dark and we found out that there was no water there. And it was a shocker for me. I had like, I had a big two liter bottle with like a, a drizzle in the bottom. And I arrived super dehydrated, ready to like, get my natural spring source, fill my bottles up and just nail another liter of water and it wasn't there. And it was just, all of a sudden, it was like a slap in the face. Like, you are thirsty and you don't have water. And water is that thing you just take for granted, you know. One night, I just, I didn't have water. I, I basically sipped on what I had, tried to preserve it. I woke up in the night a few times because my, my throat was so dry, it started to hurt. In the morning, um, Duncan could see in my face and Duncan Duncan didn't have a lot more he had maybe almost half a liter or something he was doing a little bit better he preserved a little bit better than me I'd gone all out knowing that we would have water at the at the hub we didn't yeah that was probably the first time Duncan's seen kind of my scared eyes from me it was a, a little bit concerning but in the morning we we knew that if we waited in the night, you don't want to be searching for anything. You just want to be getting your head down, wait for light, because light means safety in the mountains. So in the light, we, within five or 10 minutes, we'd found a water source and everything was fine. Did you feel a spiritual journey? Obviously, this is a route famed for walking, uh, a, wa a walking route for the monks. It's a training route. It's meant to be hard. It's meant to be enlightening and spiritual. Uh, did I did I feel it was spiritual? Not so much, actually, not so much. The the last day we passed there's a small section of the route that's for men only, and in that section, it's quite amazing. There's a there's a huge old temple there. 
it might still be busy in the summer or it might have been busy in the past i'm not really quite sure what the deal is but at the moment it's like a it's like a ghost town you know it's a big big old temple area with so many different monuments and uh, even there's one small area like a like a grotto in the forest and it's got it's got these various monuments and uh, uh, a circle of stones where they make a fire uh, incredible area you know something is very very special about what what's happening in that area and it looks used you know so I assume the monks pass through and then they perform certain rituals and I'm sure it's super special to see what what is happening there so that's as close to the spiritual side for me but mostly I would say all of the other four days for me was a mountaineering and walking challenge a hiking challenge and in fact it, I didn't meet a single monk along the route I met one priest uh, who actually refused me access to his temple so I had to sleep uh, in a car park toilets on the very first night yeah true story so my the only spiritual person I was meant to meet uh, they didn't help me and uh, non-spiritual people if you like the the average walkers that pass through these people blew me away just amazing amazing people with amazing amazing stories so for me it was less of a like religious journey and more of a challenge and a an amazing route and uh, a chance to meet some really uh, incredible brave hearts out on that mountain uh, would i do the trip again how about another route with duncan and runaway um, do i want to do the route again actually not not so much if I did do it, um, I would challenge it in four, which might sound crazy because yeah, five was hard enough, but I reckon I could pull it off in four now that I know what I know. And lighter pack, less clothes, uh, probably more sensible bag, more sensible shoes. So if I was to do it, yeah, it'd be for a challenge, but I'm not, I'm not so interested to do it again. I'm the kind of guy that is always looking for the next thing. Uh, or another walking challenge. Maybe not on this series of Runaway, but I'm just gonna throw this out there. How about the Henra? 88 temples on Chicago Island. Always been a dream of mine. Duncan's done half of them. Maybe one day you'll be voting to send me and Duncan back to Chicago to that route. So would I do another walking challenge with Duncan for Runaway? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I'm almost certain it will happen. I can't wait to do it. Will I go back on those mountains I just went on? Probably not. Peace. It's time to run.